Okay. And do you have some 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 clubs that you would love to? Yeah, see but uh, be as far as I can. But <laughs> <laughs> I would not like to say them no, because of course, of course you then you close some doors. Yeah. So I will keep you have like them this. in your mind. You have yeah, them in your mind, yes, huh? yes. That's good. That's good. Amb <laughs> ambition. You have the and and. But uh, tell me, guys, um, what was the first day you guys met? That you shook hands and be like, my name is Ali, my name is Santi. You remember? Yeah, I remember. Um, when you came in, actually, uh, yeah, one of the first thing, obviously, before Santi comes to us, uh, we knew that, you know, we're going to have someone who can help us a lot in terms of, um, you know, on the pitch, quality is going to bring and... Uh, but from other side, you know, a kid coming out from uh, from Mexico, um, you know, you want to get to know the person to see how it is because, yeah, obviously, as a new player when you come in to a new environment, um, it's not that easy that you connect with the guys straight away. But with Santi, um, yeah, he was there to be honest. And then I think it was the first day that I saw him, you know, because I was there myself with a little bit of language barrier when you come to Europe from. Uh, uh, from outside Europe, but then his English was perfect straight away. That's nah. what I remember. Yeah, it was really good. And I asked him like, "Bro, your English is very good. How come?" And he said, "Yeah, bro. Like, I, I was in a private school, so." <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, 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 good. So that was the first. Uh, yeah, I think first time we we met, and it was it was quite quite nice yeah. to be honest. Yeah. And for you, Santi, your first connection with uh, Alireza, like, what was the? Yeah, it was first. What sparked it? It was difficult for me because it was first experience here in Europe. And then I think Ali was one of the, the guys that uh, helps me uh, in everything uh, with the group. He talked to me, he, he never let me alone, you know. Mm. When you come to a team, it's like you start like a little bit alone and then you integrate. And he helped me a lot with that. And, and yeah, I remember that he he asked me why I talk English, uh, and I told him like, yeah, in Mexico it's it's, it's normal because you have USA yep. in front of us, so it's a little bit more normal. And then it surged this question about private school and oh, everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice, nice. And how did the friendship start? How did the how did the connection start between between you guys? Because you are players, but you you know there's there's grows uh, some type of friendship out of it. What, what sparked it? Did you have similar interests or was it like, you know, from, you, from your side, you saw a young kid from outside of Europe coming? How was that? Um, yeah, like I said, for me, because of I've started quite early age uh, yeah. when I moved to Europe and um, I know how's imp how important it is when you get, you know, the first impression from the group, from your teammate as well. And uh, yeah, I tried to be there for Santi. Um, I knew he coming. Obviously, he's coming from a different environment, yeah. different culture. And uh, yeah, like he said, I think it's important when you come to a new club, especially in Europe, that you know you feel home straight away yeah. because you are away from your family, from your friends, from the things that you used to uh, to be. And uh, that was something I tried to do. I tried to do with most of the young players, but with Santi it was easier because he was very open about it. Okay. Uh, and the first impression between us was was really nice, actually. And okay. As a front players, also there should be you know connection. kind of connection. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that connection we had it on the pitch. Try to have it on the pitch and off the pitch as well. Yeah. You you, you just mentioned that when he came, you d directly guided him. Like the first time when you came to the Netherlands, you played at Ni in Nijmegen, right? How was that experience? Did someone in Nijmegen guide you as well? Or was it, did you have to discover everything yourself? Um, Is that the reason why you, you were like, you know what? Yeah, I've to be honest. This, I want to help him. Yeah, I, I experienced in a different way. That's why I try to especially help young players because yeah, when I came from Iran, um, you know, a lot of people, because of they don't have the, you know, the information and everything regarding the what's going on there in terms of the talents, players, qualities. And um, for me, it was very difficult. I had to do everything with uh, not 100 percent, but 110, 120 to show that I'm capable of being here, even though uh, 
I come from a country that probably a lot of you guys don't know much about. And uh, yeah, and unfortunately my English was not that good. I couldn't really communicate and explain things that it was in my head. Really? Yeah, that bothers me a lot as well, to be honest. Mm. And uh, you want to say something? You think, yeah, you oh, want to add something to the conversation? Exactly. But you don't know how. Yeah, you, you and that was. Yourself. Yeah, I couldn't really express myself. But from the other hand, I could follow the conversations, and I was always that kid between the guys that I was always at least one step behind everybody mm. else because of. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't have a ba I didn't have a good experience when I came to the club because of. Um, yeah, the way they treated me, but inside the club, people around the club, fans, they were amazing because of, like I said, for Santi, they were amazing with him because of he's a wonderful kid on and off the pitch, so everybody's excited to see him. But that's more of the, you know, the workers, the staff, and obviously the fans as well. But in the, with the, within the players, I didn't have a good experience, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And like, they always, kids from, kids from yeah, Iran. they always, yeah, they always a little bit uh, uh, underestimate me in a lot of things, and they were making a jokes that I didn't like. Uh. Uh, it was bothering me a lot, and um, so I, I remember I was staying in a hotel um, for the first couple of weeks, and it hits me so hard. But I try to be, you know, that guy who is, you know, like a. Um, the strong mentality yep. and you know to, to don't show weakness but it hits me a lot that when I left the environment in the afternoon when I was in a hotel sometimes I was like ah, what the, what I'm doing here you know yeah. why did I come here yeah. right? and at that time it was a very unique move that a young Iranian player went to the Eredivisie because yeah. it was exactly. like mostly they go to the Middle East or uh, yeah, like Qatar or Emirat and, and otherwise, uh, yeah. Not in that time, I remember when you came to the Netherlands, I was like, what, there's an Iranian player mm. coming to the Netherlands? That was very unique in that time. Yeah. yeah, and to be honest, yeah, that was a risk that I take at yeah. the time. And uh, um, yeah, I'd never explain it to anyone or even not to my family. And every time they really call me, I told them, yeah, everything is amazing yeah. and it looks all right. And because obviously my parents were worried a lot because I was just 19 when I moved. But within the team, I had so much difficulty because one, one side you have to show yourself, your quality, and in the other hand, you have to fight with a lot of other stuff off the pitch as well. And uh, yeah, that was a crazy hard time for me. Uh, it was happening a lot of times that... Yeah, well, maybe that's why when someone new comes, mm. yeah. you go close to him. That's know? exactly. I, I said that to, to come to, to this, that... Uh, once I grow and I pass that difficulty, then everything was much easier. And then obviously that l language barrier was smaller as well. So I could, you know, manage the whole situation much better. And then obviously I start performing a lot better. And then you get the, you know, the team together and then you are more important in a team as well. So from, from that time, when I get older and older, in every new environment, every team I went, um, firstly, young players and secondly, new players who came in, I was always the first one who goes to, to them. To reach out to them. Yeah, to reach out to them, trying to make sure that they feel all right on and off the pitch and, you know, to give them a right feeling, mm -hmm. which I didn't have at the time. Respect to you for doing that, man. Yeah, man. Because uh, if I look at Feyenoord in general as a group, it seems like a, like a family. Like like the whole group, the whole, the whole team is like connected with each other. Like, what's the vibe within uh, the squad? Like, what sparked that whole energy? within the, the, the club? Yeah, well, I feel a really good vibe because, well, first of all, when I came, uh, almost everyone was new too, so no one knows anyone, so that's why we start like growing this uh, relationship with, with the players, with yep. the coach. And... Because that uh, summer it was like, I think 17 new players came into the team and yes. everybody was like, who is who? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then we start to in always you in the teams have like little groups and the little groups were like not that separate. Mm -hmm. We were like a big group, you know. Yeah. And that's why I think we we win the the prize, the the league, the Redivise. And I don't know, I at the beginning I feel a really good connection, really good feeling that this this group was going to make history and yeah. it was like this. Yeah. How was the, because I saw uh, the videos of you playing at Cruz Azul 
from since young is really your club. Yeah. And I saw the you also you know say goodbye to the club, and I saw those videos. It was pretty emotional for you. Was that also fear mm. in that time? Because you go to a place you don't know, and I think also some pressure. Oh, Santi is going to Europe. Santi is going. I saw a lot of emotions in in in, in those last days at Cruz Azul. Mm. If you if you think back at it, how was how was that time? You had fear or. Yeah, for sure. Always, uh, you like Agli says, you are, you are uh, ten hours in airplane of, uh, mm. from your family. How was that? It's, how was that flight? <laughs> that uh, flight to Rotterdam. That was amazing because it's yeah. it's it's, all, it's always I always say like it was my dream. It's mm. my dream to yeah. play in Europe, and then I had the possibility to to come, and I was really happy in the plane. Everything was like, uh, wow. Is, this is new for me. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I remember my first training. I I give everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next day I couldn't even move, but mm. I really enjoy it. And you don't really think about the fear, like you say. Mm. You don't really feel it. Just you just leave it and 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 just happen and yeah. and leave it. Yeah. I don't know how to explain. What 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 words of advice that your father gave when you hopped on a plane? No, just to enjoy it, like. Mm. He knows uh, I work a lot for this. Mm -hmm. uh, I pass I pass through a lot uh, to be there, and and the only thing I need to do is to enjoy it, to be in in present time, mm -hmm. and to see everything like for an opportunity. And yeah. That's why I think uh, now two years before that I came, if I see back, I, I make a good job here. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Did you see a younger version of yourself when he arrived the first training, doing his extra best, giving everything? Yeah, yeah. Santi was uh, the, one of the things that I always really liked about, it, uh, about him, and I told him as well, that he's consistent in the things he does. And to mm -hmm. be honest, for, since the beginning, and I think his dad being a professional footballer um, play a big part. Um, so he could just obviously transfer some of his experience towards him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he was, <clears throat> since day one, you could see he's a hard worker. He, re he re really wants to learn. He wants to improve. And uh, yeah, then you could see the results as well. And uh, um, he was, he's always one of the first guys in the gym. He's always mm -hmm. doing his stuff after the trainings as well. Probably sounds cliche a little bit, but that's his, his really everyday routine and uh, he's one of the guys who's always there since the beginning and yeah. that was actually surprising because when you come from you know outside Europe yeah. things are very different. I yeah. come from Iran, things, the way of training in the gym is totally different, probably Mexico is the same but then when you come to a you know new club which everything is very professional, you have to do your daily routines mm -hmm. in, in, in and off the pitch. So. And he was very good with that. And you could already see from the, obviously the beginning that, you know, he's going to make it here. Yeah. And um, for me, obviously expectations went, went high because when I came from Iran was the same and for him as well. Coming, the, you know, the, the wonder kid coming from Mexico, wow. everybody expects a lot. But he, yeah, the way he handled the things and performs and, and delivers to the team, yeah, it's been, it's been outstanding. Nice. What's your favorite gym exercise? You gym a lot, oh. eh? I like to work speed. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Like this exercise of uncle and speed and explosion. Acceleration. Yeah, acceleration. yeah explosion. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I like that because you are not like this, you know. You <laughs> you're using all the body and yeah, everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I like that one. But nice. What's yours? Um, yeah, mostly the same. Probably yeah. yeah, speed and agility are mm -hmm. the most important. Yeah. And obviously depends on the time. Uh, throughout the season, we work in a specific things, but yeah, I would say also the same. Speed and agility are the most yeah. important ones. Yeah. I don't really like, like, uh, if I do gym like this, upper body and everything, I'm a man. Well, I feel like uh, I grew up uh, really quickly, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't like to do like much uh, heavy but things. They, yeah, yeah. Then you get, ha you get like, like muscle. I prefer, I think you are the same. Yeah. We, like, we do, I we think we are, the, the way yeah. we train is mm. more of like what we really need on the pitch. It's not yeah, like exactly. the extras that we need to go. Yeah. Yeah. Probably a little bit of end of season for the summer. <laughs> <laughs> you do a little bit of you see everybody biceps, doing the bench biceps press. and a bench press. Yeah. 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 But for the rest, uh, no, like throughout the season, we, we don't really do heavy weights and no. stuff. So. Explosiveness, huh? 
yeah, yeah and we have really good performance coaches okay. that guide us so yeah we are happy with them nice nice ali when you when you arrived in the netherlands what's what's like a, a rookie mistake some some a, a mistake you made um like 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 you didn't know you had to experience yourself when you arrived in the netherlands when you look back at it and be like ah i should have done it different yeah what's, what's your beginner's like mistake <laughs> No, uh, when we talk about culture, yeah. um, you know, like Persian culture is very, very different to Dutch culture. I think Armin noticed it quite, quite well. Yeah. And um, in our culture, we have a lot of stuff that um, when I came here, it was very different. And um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I just give you an example. So like uh, we have a word called Tarov. Tarov is like... <laughs> You know, yeah. the older people, the people who we respect, they are always, they have to be one step ahead of you, so like with everything. And I always been the guy who always respect my coaches a lot. Even the opinion is wrong. I would never say the right opinion to him because of, I feel like that's, a, you know, it's like... Hierarchy. The, yeah, hierarchy or it's a little bit of disrespectful if you tell him, yeah, no coach, you are, you are wrong, this is the right thing or, you know, or to be quite direct. And this is like, we always really careful with this sort of stuff. But when I came here, yeah, boys were just giving the opinions. Yeah. They were shouting as a coach and uh, like the words probably I cannot use here, but. I remember one day <laughs> in the training, uh, I, I told to the coach, Arne, yeah. you remember? <laughs> hey Arne, I don't know. And Ali was looking at this. <laughs> No, you cannot say Arne, yeah. you need to show respect for him. Yeah. You need to say trainer or yeah. coach. And then I start to say in trainer because mm. I didn't know like mm. my culture is like just yeah, exactly. saying the name. So like that being direct, it was something that I didn't have it, and I was always very respectful. So we had to go through a door. I always send the okay, coach, you go first, and then I come. You know that's <laughs> that's stuff. Persian taught off. Like, yeah, like you, go, you go first, you no, go no, first, no, and, yeah, and then first, the Persians yeah. maybe they stand there five minutes yeah. telling each other, you know, you go first, no, 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 no you go first. <laughs> yeah. That's that's taught off. Mm. But I get what you're saying because you know, they're like, direct. They're like, okay, I just walk like. Yeah. Or like sometimes I had a meeting with the, with the coaches I had, especially at the beginning. Um, and sometimes they were like, yeah, coming up with a little bit of, you know, not necessarily the right thing or right answers for my questions, even though I didn't agree with them. But I was always the one who said, mm, okay, if you say maybe you're right, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying that's the right thing to do, but this is more of our culture, you know, like. Yeah. You're always trying to have that respect for the older people, coaches, and people who are around you. And yeah, like Santi said, that's probably the best example, you know, like <laughs> he probably in his culture is easy to call the coach's name and stuff. But with us, that's always uh, something we always try to, you know, be careful a little bit. Yeah, these yeah. are good manners though. They're very good manners. Yeah. Very similar to African manners. But for you, uh, Santi, like what was your, your rookie mistake, your beginner's mistake when coming uh -huh. to the Netherlands or I think, Feyenoord. yeah, I had a lot, the same, <laughs> but maybe in the pitch when I fight with the uh, Orkun Kokshu yeah. for the penalty, and my culture was number I nine taking penalties, yeah. and now, um, yeah, I was the number nine of the team, and and I, I thought like, okay, there is a penalty, no, I need to take it, <laughs> and I start fighting with the Kokshu, and yeah. I think that was a big mistake because I was not informed about uh, how important is that to follow the captain rules yeah. and everything. In Mexico, it's not like that much. It's like you can also you, show like I want to take it just yeah, to show your confidence. Yeah, yeah. And, and you talk about it, and it happened in the pitch, and then outside the pitch, it doesn't happen anything, you know. Yeah, yeah. And here it was different about that. Uh, even when I miss the penalty, cheap it. I think oh, was yeah. a big mistake for me. Uh, but you learn, you learn about all, all these yeah. these kind of things. We saw recently uh, at Chelsea at the FA Cup. You saw that? Like they had a whole fight. Yes, yeah. yes. It was like then a third person came, then a fourth person came. He pushes him. That was that was and it, it, it looks hilarious, man. Yeah, <laughs> but I think in a team it's embarrassing. Yeah, it's it's looked bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. it doesn't look good. There was like uh, four players involved. Yeah. <laughs> like Palmer was the one that take the penalty. But Madueka and Jackson were like first fighting with each other, and then Callagher came, took the ball, gave to Palmer. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, chaotic. Yeah. chaotic. yeah, after this, I was really ashamed. Like, yeah. oh, mm. why did I do this? But that's you. You learn from that. Yes. Yeah, of that's course. What you learn from. And I think this will happen in Chelsea too. They, yeah, they will learn now from from this. Yeah. True, true, true. Guys, this season, um, 
you got actually Feyenoord is performing as good as last season, maybe even better, better when it comes more to points. points. You have more points. But because PSV is extremely good, they became champions. How how do you guys experience this this season? Because when it comes to numbers, you guys did actually better than last year, but it's still mixed feelings, I think. Well, you still have a trophy, you have a cup. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. But no, know. that's true, no. Um, comparing to last year, um, I would say probably performance-wise and then within the group because um, last year at the beginning of the season we started with a lot of new players. A lot of guys moved away and then we had to bring in a lot of new players as well. And to get used to a new environment with new players, tell them the way the coach wants to play and stuff, um, it takes some time. But then the best thing happened with us was obviously the guys, you know, like took the took everything quite quickly and uh, everybody started performing and that ended up you know, winning the league. And it, until some point was quite close, I would say, until probably winter and after winter, probably at the beginning. But then that uh, consistently we had, we, that makes us you know, winning the league last year, yeah. which this year, uh, I would say probably, like you said, in terms of performances and points, we, we were doing really good, I would yeah. say. Uh, but uh, yeah, PSV has been yeah they've been really really good. Yeah. They didn't give anything away, yeah. uh, so that makes it a bit more difficult. But then in some point, then we focus more on the, on cup game, and yeah. then yeah, luckily we won that. Yeah. So I think I would say if you put it, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. If you put everything together, it's been a good season. If we finish second, it's still secure the Champions League and winning the cup. So I think it's been, uh, yeah. been a quite good season. Was it difficult to live up to the expectations because you start the new season as champions? Did you notice, for example, in, with the opponents that they were playing differently against you, more aggressive or more defensive as, as, as the champion of the Netherlands? Did you notice a huge difference? I feel it a little bit like they respect us a little bit more. Oh. Like they were more, <laughs> not respect us about uh, pass the other way. Yeah? <laughs> the other way yeah. Like I will kick, I will kick you now, okay. and we will play defensive, and that's what happens to us. I think this this season we we play as football we play better than last season, but I think uh, we drop a lot a lot of of points. I think the dos, the sorry, I dos, <laughs> the two first games. We, we 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 draw it and and at the beginning you don't see the importance of that games but then after at the end you know that were really important. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. And Volendam and I say twenty we drop points like mm -hmm. really easy that we could win it because we had we got a lot of chances. Mm -hmm. And did you notice that for example that Mr. Slot was trying to keep you guys sharp at all times and getting you guys used to the new environment as the champions of the Netherlands, did you guys notice anything different from him as well? Yeah, that was one of the things he really keeps repeating to us. That as in, uh, as in like a rain champion, they always expect you to go and perform. Um, and what Santi said, that's probably the best part of this season that what happened to us, that a lot of teams probably um, just saying took us more serious. It's like they, they knew that they, they're going to play against the champion of the okay. country. Yeah. So then they would have pro play probably a bit more different defensively. They come more hard. They, players, individuals, they want to show themselves because they play against the champion of the country. Uh, but yeah, he keep repeating us. Every time we drop, uh, because it happens a couple of times after a great performance, winning a big team against a big team, then we drop performance and then we gave a point away yeah. the game straight, the game after, with all the respect with a little bit of, you know, like a lower teams. But yeah, he always uh, keep us on our toes. Every time, you know, try to make sure that, you know, we are there performing mentally. And uh, I think that helps a lot to win a lot of points. And we had great performances in Champions League as well. I think where we deserve a lot more as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, he, he played a big part in that, to be honest. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. Is there one match this season you, if you could choose and click on restart match? Like in FIFA, which which game would you like to play again? That didn't go well, and then we would like to play again, or uh, or the the match that you enjoyed so much that you want to experience that feeling again. Up to you. 
I will change one that we lose because mm. if I want to repeat the experience, I would say Lazio, my debut of Champions League. Yeah. But we win, so we leave it like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I need to change one, I think one important for myself was um, when I chipped the penalty. Mm -hmm. I think for myself was important. Yeah. Because I. Uh, I was in my confidence really high, and I yeah, think yeah, yeah. after that I start lower my level. Which match would you uh, choose? Um, I would probably pick a match where I didn't play myself due to the injury, but uh, Atletico home, mm -hmm. because that game could have been a game changer in terms of you know making it through in the Champions yeah. League, and in terms of enjoying the game that I would like to play again, um, definitely Ajax home. Axel, yeah. yeah, that was like one big party. That was a nice game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. legendary, legendary. Do you guys realize that you are going to be legends forever if you leave the club? <laughs> Difficult question. For me personally, what's important is that wherever I play, I leave something for myself. And uh, that's what I try to do over the last three years in Feyenoord as well in terms of you know the relationship the connection you have with the fans within the club with players staff and that's always been you know very very important to me probably legend it's probably a big statement that's something yeah. you have to leave it to people but as someone to remember as winning a prize at this club i think so i think so this group of players this year last year especially i think all of these guys are you know really deserve to remember as a, yeah. as a, you know, players who pe people, fans would probably remember for so many years. And then, of course, on top of that, I would put um, Arne himself. Arne Slot play a big, big part in this. And all the staff we have, I would include the technical staff, medical staff, all the people around the club, um, all the ladies who work at the club, you mm -hmm. know, like the, all the kitmans. Mm -hmm. I would to, to like to name them out, all out, that they play all a very, very big part to yep. this club to be successful. So I really hope so. I can say from a Feyenoord fan perspective, like th these generations that are growing up and visiting the matches, we've been through hell in the past 15 years. You know, it's like we had the 10-0 against PSV, we become 10, 7, people laughing at us. And what you guys did in the last two, three years is really like, Unique, really like, you know, uh, championship and season after the cup, uh, you know, a Europe, legendary European match. Because we used to be a joke in Europe, like in the last 10 years, it was like, oh, we're going to go to this match, but it's, it's not going to happen. Nothing special will happen. So even if after this final becomes way, way, way better and etc., it started with it in these last two seasons. Yeah, so the I can... The fundament started with you guys. Yeah. So I can, I can, from my perspective as a Feyenoord fan, tell you guys, like, you guys will be remembered forever. Everybody will remember, like, oh, remember those years with, with, with Santi and Ali. Like, this is this something really, really unique uh, you, guys, uh, you guys performed. And, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, I think so. Um, but I think a legend is, like, another world. <laughs> I think, well, from my opinion, I, I don't think so. We are legends, like... Big history, Feyenoord. They mm -hmm. have a lot of big players, but of course, it's nice uh, to give something to the club and, and to be in history. Because, like you say, you have passed through bad years, and mm -hmm. and now we are getting again back of what is Feyenoord yeah. real. And when you like get in love of one team, uh, it's good to to go, uh, leaving a lot of of things for yeah. the club. And we did it, so I'm happy for that. I see, I see. Mm. Nice. We're going to talk about culture, guys. Yes. Because I've seen your documentary and I read into the history of you both. And in your case, Santi, you're like, you're an Argentinian kid growing up in Mexico. Yes. What is the difference between Argentinians and Mexicans? Because from for the Dutch perspective, it's like, okay, there are two countries, they both speak Spanish. Yeah, it's Latin America. It's Latin America. That's yes, what I think. Yes, yes. <laughs> but I think you, as a Mexican kid, uh, or as an Argentinian kid growing up in Mexico, you've been through, you know, some, 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 some other stuff. How would you describe the difference? Well, uh, 
just for the people to know, I was born in Argentina. Yeah. All my family is from Argentina. But when I was uh, three years old, I, I came to live uh, to Mexico. So I feel more Mexican because I passed all my life in Mexico yeah. and I grew up with my friends Mexicans, with the cultures of Mexico. Mm -hmm. But still my family uh, makes me do the Argentinian thing, so yeah, it's yeah. difficult to... What is uh, something Argentinian that Mexicans didn't understand? I think it's, the, of cultures are really similar. Mm -hmm. They are not much different. I cannot say something special. Maybe... Maybe the food? Yeah, the food, of course, is different, but we love meat. Argentinians. <laughs> carne, carne. Yeah, Argentinians eat steak every day, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, but in Mexico too, yeah. because yeah. you have the tacos with the meat. Tacos, and yeah. I, I, don't know, I always say it's really similar yeah. culture. Mm. You drink yerba mate tea? Mate, yeah, mate. That's like, mate. Uh, that's, that's, that's Argentina. Argentina is more mate, Mexico is more coffee. Yeah. Um, then it's, it's always all the same. Yeah, because sometimes I see comments on your Instagram posts of Dutch people t asking like, what is this thing he's drinking in a cup? Explain to the people, what is, what is mate tea? You see also Argentinian players drink it. Yeah, mate is, um, like you say, uh, it's like a big tea in a cup uh, with hot water. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have more explication. It's mm -hmm. just like uh, a drink from Argentina that you you get used to it to to drink it uh, all the day, and and you know how it, how it tastes, and, mm -hmm. and I like it really much because it, it is not just the the drink; it's the tradition. It's like yeah. having something in your hand in 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 the day. Yeah, uh, and the preparation also is very special, right? Yeah, the preparation is important uh, <laughs> from Argentina <laughs> yeah. people. If you if he knows about mate and you give just a, a cup of tea, he will not like it. You need to yeah. prepare it, you need to, to be good at that. Mm. And for uh, you, Ali Reza, like, have you experienced some of his culture? And vice versa, have you experienced some Iranian Persian culture? Like, have you guys traded in that way, in terms of like going to a Mexican or Argentinian restaurant, or you bringing him some I of think your culture? One of the similarities we have with uh, Ali is that we are really open mind so, to try new things. Yeah, and uh, like we are a different religion, but we are like brothers mm -hmm. of, of religion. You know, we we want to learn about each other, and mm -hmm. we don't make a statement of religion and separate because yeah, you are from another religion. Mm -hmm. uh, the other way, we are together, and we want to we learn about the other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Did he try kebab kubi there already? No, he hasn't. Yeah, no, no, Ali, no, no, come no. on. But bring... I make uh, other uh, Persian foods at the yeah. club twice. Oh, you, and, you prepared uh, something? Wow. Yeah, yeah, oh, nice. I prepared something twice, actually. One time, something with the beef. We call it Qaymen uh, Nassar. That's oh, from okay, the city yeah, yeah, where yeah, I come yeah. from. And um, I, I make one other thing uh, with some, more with chicken, but... Um, and a lot of boys, they love it. Yeah, did you yeah. like it Persian as well? Food, Persian food yeah, I like, really it, nice. I like yeah. it. Persian food is really nice. Okay. But what I can say, because we have it a lot as well, we have a lot of barbecues, but Argentinian barbecues, Mexican tacos, these are really nice. And mm -hmm. I love, I love, I mean, I love food in general, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I mean, Argentinian barbecue is amazing. Now uh, he will come to Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I invite him. Yeah, he invited me actually, end of May, I'm going to Mexico. Hey, wow, nice. Beautiful. Yeah, that was, that's Beautiful. gonna be my now first time. Now I will time. show him yeah? what the show Mexican him the food. Mexico. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Should I tell something about Mexican food? Like, I, always, I couldn't understand why you guys put fruit. Like mango yeah. or pineapple, yes. and some, <laughs> when I when I when I try burrito or tacos, and I'm like, what is this mango doing? But then I went to LA, yes. and I think the tacos are you know a little bit more Mexican. Yeah. yeah, and I had a fresh piece of mango in my taco, and it was so good. It yeah. immediately made sense why there's mango in tacos. Like I'm also I don't like fruit in in in, in food, but this. It, it really made sense. It was beautiful. It but was nice. but that's sweet, more pineapple, sweet, I know. Sweet, sweet, pineapple. Yeah, yeah. The sweetness of pineapple and um, that goes well with. It's a good contrast. Yeah. 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 You try it in Mexico. Don't try it here. It. it sounds like a taste clash, but yeah, like exactly. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> even sounds good to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> putting, putting pineapple it and has a yeah. nice sweet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it's it's not like too much, but you have a bite and you feel like a, a some a tick of sweetness. It's mm. nice. I was yes. anti like also people will put pineapple on their pizza. I don't even want to talk to you. You know, but but in a taco, it's like yeah. Probably you have to have it 
in the right place and yeah. the right and quality. And in Mexico, and you will really try that. If I'm honest, I don't like the pineapple in the tacos. <laughs> <laughs> but you ha in Mexico, you have a big discussion, like 50-50, <laughs> of people much. who like yeah. it yeah. and people yeah. who yeah. not. So I'm yeah. very happy you're on the 50, which they don't <laughs> like it, bro. You will try, you will decide yourself. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay, Santi, okay, uh, taco, burrito, or quesadilla? Which one? Taco. Taco? taco? Sí. Okay, yeah. why? The meat, yeah. I think... Uh, it's, it's almost the same, but you need to go to understand a little bit more because you can have a quesadilla taco, mm. a taco oh, quesadilla. You I've know. never had that. Yeah, burrito is almost the same as a taco. Okay. So the three of them are really similar. Okay. Like uh, taco with cheese is quesadilla, yeah. so, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's almost the same, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask Ali, kebab could be there, gourmet sabzi or gourmet? I would go for gourmet sabzi. Um, yeah, because yeah, like I said, Persian food is it's quite nice. I would say I, I think one time I took some of the boys. You you were not around, I think. So I, I, we had to go somewhere with uh, some of the Feyenoord boys, mm -hmm. and I took them to Persian restaurant in, uh, um, and they they loved it. Mm -hmm. And they try different kebabs. They try uh, different you know beef stews and stuff. And they really liked it. And mm. um, a lot of people compare Persian to Arabic food, or um, I would say probably the closest to us is a Turkish food. Turkish food, yeah. I would say. Yeah, mm. it's, uh, you know, um, True. how we taste and the way of making the food and um, ingredients and stuff is quite similar. But uh, yeah, a Persian food, I think, uh, yeah. Really, really tasty. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna really over exaggerate around <laughs> that. But uh, if anybody has a chance, yeah, uh, would try you like to try? Yeah. yeah. What do you think, for my invite? You never. Yeah, I, I can yeah, I'm blaming him why I didn't. I didn't yeah. try Cabo, but I didn't, yeah. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> try. But because I've shown you my country, my friend. That's true. That's true. That's true. I went to Ghana with him, and he and I love Ghanaian food. It's yeah. pretty good. So yeah, pretty good. But I, but, but because because. Uh, Argentinians eat like you know good meat. I think kebab kubida would also be something probably we yeah. yeah, yeah. comparable. But That's what is best Ghanaian food then? Oof, uh, jollof rice also oh. with meat and 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 and, uh, and uh, vegetables. But the jollof rice is like orange rice. Mm. Yes. So you can basically compare it to the Surinamese nasi, with, where the rice is brown. Mm -hmm. And in, in Africa, it's it's either uh, orange or yellow. Okay. But it's also yeah. with meat and vegetables. Also very we have a similar food called lubia polo. That's ah, also my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's also comes like an orange rice. Yeah, that is. Yeah, but jollof <laughs> is, uh, is 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 different. Yeah, yeah. I think our rice is, is uh, dry. Yeah, your rice is more like more like a soft. Um, yeah, soft. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. True. Yeah. Something. Yeah, the food is something important yeah. in the culture, sir. Eh? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The enchiladas in Mexico. Enchiladas. Yeah. Oh. Are you gonna have a good time? Yeah, you gonna yeah. Yeah, man. Let's food. see. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> But what about Dutch food? You guys are grew up Oof. here, you know, like <laughs> things like hari and stuff like that. Okay, hari? I love hari. You, did you ever had hari? No, eh? No. So like when, I, when I came yeah. to this country... Ah, yes, yes, I tried it, I tried it. It's a raw I fish. I like yeah. it. Raw fish with um, onion, yes. raw onion, and yeah. yeah, you can have it with a little bit of... I like it. Squeezing the juice. Yeah. yeah, I like it. I'm gonna yeah, be surprisingly honest. that... I'm going to be honest, the only thing I like about Dutch cuisine is the, the stompot, is the, the, the stamped potatoes with the spinach. That's the only thing I'm yeah. like, okay, I'll, I'll eat it. A stump you know? doesn't even sound good, to be honest. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it works, you know? <laughs> it works. No, but... And then you have, you have so many other things, but everything in... But Dutch is cuisine is really we, based on German cuisine. Yeah, but obviously they were one country back in the day. True. So it's like the, the potato-driven... Is the, the, the base is potato. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it's either mashed or cooked. Everything potato. But not with a lot of spices no. or herbs. So no, I think no it's taste. So you have yeah. to put the taste in it. You yeah. know. Okay. And I come from a very spicy house household. So for me, it's like okay, yeah. <laughs> to add some, yeah. some spice. Real Dutch food is like bitter balla, yeah, frikandel. Yeah. That's like the snacks. The snacks. Yeah. yeah it's Dutch not. people love their snacks. They're yeah. They love their fries from here. Yeah. 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 They're really good. Yeah, yeah. They're good with fries. Yeah. No, I would prefer Mexican food any day. Or any day. Or more any day. Flavor, more flavor. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Santi, you grew up in a household where I think your father was also playing. And growing up, he, he played for Argentina and then also for Mexico, right? Yes. How did, how, how did that happen and how did you experience that? Yeah, he was, when he was young, like my age, uh, he was playing for uh, the young South Argentina. And then he, well, he, they, a Mexican team by him from 
Independiente, a club from Mexico. Yeah. He played in Boca Juniors, uh, Union and Independiente. Then he go to Mexico. That's when I, I went with him and, and lived there. And then he, he, he start like after 10 years in Mexico, he start feeling the, the country as, as his country too. Mm -hmm. And at the end, uh, well, he was in Mexico and they called him about uh, okay. from the first national team from Argentina with Maradona. Because uh, he played one game for Argentina when Maradona was coach, or not? He didn't play. He was oh, in the team. In the team. Yeah, he was, uh, but he didn't play any game. Okay. So that's why after five, five years after, mm -hmm. he could play for Mexico. Mm -hmm. And for Mexico, yeah, he played like uh, 10 games. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and growing up, like, did your father give you like advice about like the football industry or like, is he a, is he a different type of football player than you, for example? Uh, we are uh, the same character, I think, in the pitch. Um, he was midfielder number 10. I'm more number nine, but I think in, in personality we are almost the same, but in technique and everything we are different. Mm, so different you, type of player. Yeah. So you both have the grinta, like that? Yes, yes, yes. Ah, okay, yes, okay. Yes. <laughs> Who did you support this World Cup? <laughs> oh, Mexico, Mexico. Mexico? Yeah. Yes. yeah. No Argentina? No, Mexico. Okay, okay. Yeah, like um, if you look at both countries, both have had like crazy pro prolific strikers. Like if you look at Mexico, like uh, uh, what's it called, Hugo Sanchez, Hugo Sanchez. Uh, Luis Her uh, Hernandez, Cuauhtémoc Blanco, Chicharito, Chicharito, <laughs> Borghetti, and then Argentina also. Yes, yes. A lot of crazy strikers. Like when you grew up, did you look up to a striker where you got inspiration from? I don't even, well, of course Chicharito was like for me the big man in, when I was a kid because he was playing United in Real Madrid and he was Mexican, so so my, my eyes was look at, looking at him like a, a big man. Um, but then after, I'm in love with Messi. I, I think he's the best player in history in the world and he have a really good actions with me and with my father. So I love him. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so you got inspired by Chicharito. Yeah. Chicharito. Well. Well, my favorite striker um, was Falcao, Radamel Falcao. Oh, yes. he's Colombian, eh? Colombian, yeah. Different uh, striker. Different, yeah, very different. <laughs> yes, but he was my favorite. You didn't like uh, Batistuta Crespo? Yes, but... <laughs> long time ago. Yeah, that was <laughs> more, <laughs> more long time. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay. Legendary Batistuta. Yeah, but, but Chicharito was also one of the, the few Mexican strikers that actually did well in Europe, eh? Yes. Yeah, yes. not much that actually... Yeah, uh, he played in the time. best teams in the world. Yeah. And yeah. If you ask a fan of Real Madrid or from Manchester United, yeah, he will tell you that he yeah. do it really good. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, you have Marquez, Rafael Marquez, but he's a defender, yeah. you know? Yes. Legendary Mexican uh, players, yeah. but you also did something legendary. Yeah. You decided the, the Gold <laughs> Cup final <laughs> against Panama. How was, how was that? Because it was in a crazy big stadium. It was in America? Yes. Full of Mexican fans, like we know, like a lot of Mexican fans are in, in, in the USA and I saw all green colors and I see, you know, I actually also feel kind of proud. Yeah, it's a finer play with the yeah. side of the Gold Cup. How, how was that for you? No, I think the best feeling in football I have yeah. because it's my country and, and when you play, Ali can tell you, when you play for your country, it's, it's like a little bit more, yeah. And to make the this goal in the 88, 86, I don't yeah. remember very good. It was like uh, wonderful, amazing, yeah. and first experience in uh, official tournament with mm -hmm. the national team. It was like all perfect, yeah. Yeah, did it also feel felt like some kind of revenge because you weren't selected for the World Cup while well, everybody expected it. And then the next tournament, half year later, you you decided. Did you feel some type of revenge? Like you see, this this is who I am. <laughs> and I didn't think about revenge in that time, but uh, yes, the the like when they don't call me, the days after and the weeks after, uh, I tell myself uh, like I need to prove them. Mm -hmm. They are wrong, you know, with mm -hmm. the decision. So I started working hard and hard and hard, and and I think this is the consequence of. Of this, yeah, yeah. Ali Reza, you had a similar experience with the Asian Cup, 
where you also scored a very important goal in the knockout stages. How did that feel for you? To be honest, when we were I'm, all watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we yeah. When I look back to the whole tournament, I would say I think we deserve more, uh, especially after uh, the great knockout stage game we play against Japan. Mm -hmm. um, we thought within the group, and obviously the feeling in the country and all around was okay. Now it's time to make because we didn't win it for more than 50 years now. We didn't win the Asia Cup and. Uh, yeah, I think the whole tournament was, was very, very good. We had a lot of good performances. And to be honest, we, we live up to the expectations until some point, even more than that, because um, the whole group stage games and, you know, like the, all the games, the way it went, that Jap Japan's supposed to be in the other side yeah. and we being this side, and then we were expecting to, you know, to face each other probably in a final. And you know th how the way the, the games went, and uh, yeah, Japan lost the game against Iraq, and then they had to come this side. So then, yeah, in last eight, we had to play against Japan, which a lot of people didn't expect that no, we're gonna, that early, you know, yeah. you know, be, we're yeah. gonna make it through. But um, yeah, to be honest, when I left Feyenoord, um, I told uh, Ayasa Ueda that uh, yeah, we're gonna definitely meet in the final. But yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, we had to meet a bit earlier. But then, um, to be honest, the confidence within the group was was very, very good, and everybody had, you know, like the feeling that, you know, we have we have enough qu quality to compete with them. What a game, eh? That one. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> it was an amazing game, and yeah, uh, yeah and may we make it through, and I think that was the time, like I said, everybody thought, okay, now is the time, you know, to win the prize for the country, um, because yeah, Iran is a, you know, football is a first sport, and uh, yeah, people love the national team, and they always follow all the players wherever they go. So yeah, to be honest, it was a big disappointment because especially for us, this generation, we already played two World Cup together. We played two Asia Cup and this was probably a time, you know, to leave something from our generation mm -hmm. for the rest of the history in our, uh, in a, you know, Iranian football. Yeah. But yeah, unfortunately in the semi-final, um, I personally think that we really bit, uh, uh, mis uh, misunderstimate the, uh, the, the, the team opponents. we played, Qatar. Yeah. Um, and that was, you know, gave us the biggest punishment, which was losing the semi-final. Uh, yeah. But how did it feel to captain your, your team and score that, that, that winning penalty? Oh, amazing. I mean... Um, you were nervous. Like Santi said. <laughs> <laughs> no, like Santi said, you know, when you play for national team, it's very, very different. I mean, the, especially in our culture, we are very proud people and... You know, wherever I go, I just say it out loud that I'm Persian, I come from Iran, and whenever I have the opportunity to play for Iran, you know, like I try to do because of, you know, people love football and they expect from you as a player who plays in Europe to perform for, uh, uh, for them. And yeah, first time when I won the captain band was in, back in 2018 in a World Cup against Spain. And it was crazy because my family were there, you know, my parents were there and my mom and dad both are big football fans. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And yeah, after the game when they just, you know, I hugged my mom and dad, they were crying because of seeing the, you know, captain bands on my arm. It was just, you know, that, that time I thought, yeah, okay, I've done it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And it was a, it's, a, it's a feeling that is very difficult to express. But then, yeah, then in a certain point that uh, I was the first captain, I became the first captain. And then when you are there, then you have to represent for what, almost 90 million people. Then is too much responsibility, but um, I always try to take it in the right way. And of course, that game against Japan, like Santi said, it was an important moment because, yeah, you know, everybody expect you um, you know, to yeah, to yeah. make sure that you know you're winning the game. And you have all the country. In yeah, but to be honest, in that moment, I wasn't really thinking about it, and I was very calm. I was very you know relaxed in that moment. I wasn't then, calm. That's <laughs> No, we, were, but we were in Ivory Coast at the Africa Cup, and yeah. I was like, <laughs> what was it, at the yeah. hotel? Yeah, we no, the videos out. I got after yeah. the game, it yeah. was just a goosebump. Yeah, it was, yeah oh, crazy, but yeah, yeah. luckily uh, I could finish the finish. When is the next Asian Cup? Two, two years? Three years? No, it's, in, no uh, it's, every, it's always one year after the World Cup. Oof. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah then yeah. you will be 33? 33, yeah. yeah. You done already? It's impossible, won? my friend. 
we won Asia Cup a yeah. couple of times, but yeah. it's like I said, long back in ago, back what in yeah seventies. Yeah. How do you look back at uh, it's it's a uh, it's a fucked up thing to talk about that 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 ball rolling to the post in the last minute in the <laughs> semi final because I was yeah it was like this oh, I really yeah. hope that you could score. Uh, the I think in that game we we scored quite early. We scored after what three four minutes, mm -hmm. and I think that was also a little bit of killer because mm -hmm. we thought okay it's gonna be a you know mm -hmm. easy day and you know. And I was uh, already telling him, like, Qatar, we're already in the finals, yeah. we're going to play against Qatar. And, yeah. Yeah. and unfortunately, we had a big drop down after that. Mm -hmm. um, and we, like I said, the feeling was, okay, today's the day that we're going to make it. And then, yeah, yeah unfortunately, we were 2-1 down and then second half, we make it 2-2. But then, uh, yeah, like out of nowhere, we yeah. considered the third one. Yeah, but then in that moment, uh, yeah, like then you try to, because then we went, uh, down with 10 men so then it was a little bit more difficult but then the chance you said yeah, yeah it was yeah I actually thought because from my angle I thought it's in but mm. then it just hit inside post and, and then went out. from yeah on the line went out yeah. but, but yeah that's on a yeah. pitch and it, and it went on a post yeah, that's part of this game hopefully man. next yeah. time man hopefully next time yeah. Santi you know like we're talking about national team you know it's the most proudest thing you can do as a football player representing your country and in the last matches for Mexico, you see like, you know, you get benched a lot and people talk, yes, he's like top scorer at Eredivisie, but that's just Eredivisie. People have like, especially in Mexico, everybody has an opinion. And they, it looks like they pushing you like, yo, yeah, it's nice that he's doing good in the Eredivisie, but that's not really big. Is that, is that something you experience too? How they talk about it? Yeah, it's uh, exactly what you say. I think a uh, lot of op opinions that mm -hmm. I, I better don't listen to them, but um, what I feel is that what you say, like they don't see like the really importance of being a, a top scorer in the Eredivisie. Mm -hmm. I think um, they don't think the, they don't see the magnitude of playing Champions League, yeah. uh, of compete here, uh, of have a 23 years old and, and be yeah. competing in this high level. And I think that's my opinion, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and is it like, because um, in the end, the Eredivisie right now is a, is a, is a, is a top five league. And, and, and yeah, as you say, as a 23 year old, you're doing, you're doing great things. Um, but does it bring some type of Irritation, or because because I also think when I see you play, I'm, when it's like international week, you fly like a big amount of hours to Mexico, and then you come back. You know, did it also it has to do something with rest or or? or? Yeah, that's the difficult part. Like uh, if you fly too many hours, you yeah. you, you expect to play. You mm -hmm. know. And if you don't play, of course your your head is mm -hmm. is talking to you. Yeah. Uh, bad things and everything, but I just keep working and, and I know it's, it's part of the process. I am a young player and I have uh, many years in front uh, for playing for the True. national team. So, True. so I, I just talk to myself and, and tell me like, be patient and I believe a lot of, in God and I know the, the time of God is perfect. So yeah. I'm really patient on that and just keep working and keep trusting on myself yeah. that it will come, it will come yeah. the, uh, to be the, the striker of the national team. Do you feel extra fatigued, extra tired this season? Because you had a very short stop after the Gold Cup. You went immediately into preparation and, you know, did it feel, ex is, is there some, some, some fatigue or tiredness people don't see because you barely rest the past 12 months? Yeah, I could say yes, uh, because yeah, my, my holidays were in the winter break. Mm -hmm. I, I have like oh, wow. one week and it was uh, like all we, I have. And mm -hmm. this summer it will be like this, yeah. the same because we have the Copa America. But uh, it's part. Oh, Mexico is, is performing Copa America this year. Yes. Ah, okay then. Wow. So, so I go to Mexico. I have one week, and then we present with national team again. Yeah. But it's part of the game, and I decide to live this life. So yeah, but I'm really grateful. And but if you compare to other players, even you know, with all the flight time you have and the short breaks you have, it's like it. You have to be top, top, top fit to 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 bear this, because. 
you know, I see last week's also players of Manchester City talking like, yo, we're playing too much, it's too much. Yeah, Bernardo <laughs> Silva, it was like he was almost crying, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's difficult in, in terms of mindset. I think mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the people don't understand why if they give me two days, I go mm -hmm. like, I make a big, uh, yeah. big holiday, you know. But it's because it's the time I have to, to know places, it's the time I have to be with my family. Um, and that's what I, I do. I, if they give me three days, four days, five days, I try to give everything in that day, rest, you know, yeah, to yeah, rest. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, crazy, man. Like, you know, people talk about it, like, yeah, Santi this, Santi that, but then, then I immediately think, like, this guy only had. Yeah. People, people underestimate the, the, yeah, the amount of time you actually had for holiday. They don't, yeah. they don't know that yeah. you went through this. Yeah, yeah, and I'm the type of player that I don't want to lose any game. So Yeah, yeah you want to play everything. Yeah, I want to play you know? everything. Yeah. So but look I remember last season, Arne told me like two weeks before the end of the season, mm -hmm. he told me, you can go now on holidays because okay. you will not have. Mm -hmm. And I tell him, no, I want to play. So. Mm -hmm. It's my fault too. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so looking forward with this experience, would you do the same? Would you listen to your body and take some rest, or would you continue playing? Uh, I don't know. Um, I really feel like uh, tired in mind, but I love to play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I need to listen think. Listen to the I body also. Eh? Yeah. Yes, I know. We're gonna stay young forever, eh? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but throughout the years, once I just go through the, you know, the season by season. Because when you are in the younger age, the energy you have, the excitement of the game and everything push you towards play as much as possible. But then sometimes you think like, yeah, like, like Santi's situation, he has to fly a lot, especially Time like- Time difference. There was, there was in some point, um, every month was FIFA day. And then yeah. he had to go every month traveling somewhere to, you know, like South America, you know, players we had everywhere. And that's very tough. But mm. then I think the, the managing of the time and managing of the you know, playing time is really, really important because mm. you know, as a player, you want to play, but then your performances are not always there how you want. So yeah, man. like I said, yeah, I mean, like playing a lot of games takes yeah. a lot of energy, not only physically, but yeah, mentally. mentally as yeah, well. Man. But also from you guys' perspective, like, you know, it's, it's first the time difference, you know, also for you, sometimes you have to fly to Indonesia for a qualifying game or you have to go to Honduras, you know, the circumstances are also different. It's really, you know, people don't think about it. And that's yeah. also with the this show, we want to shine light on that, yeah. that, you know, it's not just a break in the Netherlands, you play at the Kuip and then with the bus, you go home. You guys, you, you, you guys go like on 10, 15 hour flights to, to, to play international match. I get tired if I go on vacation. After. <laughs> After I, uh, our flight, you no, know. No, and imagine do that flight and just play 20 minutes. Yeah. So that it's, is mental more game. mental game, yeah. you know. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. the difficult thing. I see, I see. I and you, you say with resting days, you also, family time is important. We saw in a documentary that, you know, uh, that, uh, that your girlfriend is at the other side of the world supporting. What are some tips you can give to the people on long distance relationships? <laughs> Oh, very <laughs> complicated. Now, now, now we're talking about life. I don't know. Um, I don't have the answer, but what I did with my girlfriend is uh, just uh, make your dreams. I make mm. my dreams, and we fight together to be. We push together each one, so so both can make uh, our dreams. Yeah, That's and good. then we will have time to to. To, to see us and yeah. to connect and everything. And that helps us a lot because uh, my girlfriend is um, really important for me. I yeah. think uh, he always, she always pushed me to, to be better and I always push her to, to be better as well. And my fathers are really important too because yeah. You saw it, yeah. they always come to, to here to the Netherlands to support me and to be with me that I, I don't be alone. Nice. Same with my girlfriend, my sisters. Um, I'm a family man that loves family and I always want them to, to have it close. That's good. <laughs> Same as Ali Reza. Yeah, 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 yeah. And for you, Ali, like we talked about your move on an early age from Iran to Europe. What always bothered me 
as a as a uh, as an Iranian guy who loves football is that a lot of talented players, in my opinion, in Iran, they play on safe. They go to you know they shine in the Iranian league. They can go to maybe to lower league clubs in like maybe Belgium, Portugal, or whatever. But they choose for say for Qatar or Emirat and they stay there. And I think the level of the Iranian football keeps there. You made a very beautiful and good decision, which I hope inspires a lot of young Iranian people. Do you agree with me in some sort of way, like more Iranian players should come to Europe so the level of Iranian football goes up? Oh, definitely. I mean, over the years, um, it's been much better and we have, we have had much more players coming yep. to Europe. Yeah. But um, still not enough, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, like going back to your point, um, I think there are a couple of things which probably um, really affects their decisions. Like one, like you said, it's just you know Middle East is around the corner. It's around the corner. It's quite close financial wise. It's quite good for them. True. You know, they are close to family. Um, you know, with all the respect, level wise, and you know the expectations are not that high. So. They can perform, you know, as much quality they have. But over the years, that's what I always try to tell, especially in, to, to young, talented players who come to, you know, national team. I always try to tell them, like, you know, beginning is going to be difficult. I've been through a lot of difficulties yeah. myself. But then it's all worth it because once you are there and once yeah. you are doing certain things, you know, to develop yourself as a player, then it gets better, life gets easier and you enjoy the game much more because yeah. I think what personally for me, what makes this game, you know, much more beautiful is like everybody compete against each other. And yeah. if you are better, then you get your chance. And every day you push towards something where, you know, as a professional footballer, yeah. you want to become. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, that comfort zone that they, do, they don't come out. Which I also understand. Mm. Maybe, you know, I talk easy for my, yeah, just go to Europe. But, you know, when you can get like a beautiful salary in Qatar and it's like two hour flight from home, one hour flight, it's more likable to, to choose for that. But yeah, these are like the conversations, like a lot of Iranian football fans have, just go, go to Europe. Do you have these conversations with, with fellow teammates? Do, did they, do, do they seek advice from you? Because you, you lived it all. Yeah, a lot of times. And um, also there are a lot of other circumstances around. Yeah, I'll give you an example, like a lot of scouts because of the situation in Iran and, mm -hmm. you know, um, the whole thing around it. They don't, you know, spend enough time to go to Iran and mm -hmm. see the league, see the competitions, you know, see how it is. And a lot of young kids there, they're performing. So if they want to pick because of, you know, like when we talk about talented players, a lot of countries, I would say, at least in Asia, mm -hmm. like Japan, South Korea, you know, those countries, Australia, they mm -hmm. come first. Yeah. And then they will think about, okay, if mm -hmm. Iranian player has enough talent, then we take the risk to take them to Europe. Yeah. And that comes also because of the culture barrier, language barrier, you know, like a lot of things that, you know, they think that there is a big difference. But I don't think if there is because of, you know, I've experienced it myself. Yeah. And from the other side, there are also some rules like national service. Yeah. You know, all the kids they oh, have yeah. to go to is uh, obligated in Iran. And, you know, these are the things that I would probably see that the young kids, they, they're, they're not seen as much as, you know, yeah. they really deserve to. True, 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 true. I see you talk a lot when it comes to, I see something like you're, you, 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 can, you, can, you can advise young players, you know, you, 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 you help Santi. And, and people ask you for advice. I recently saw your uh, ambassador of uh, Novio Talent Cup, mm. a tournament in uh, Nijmegen with all types of international teams. Do you see like a future for yourself after your career, helping people, becoming a coach? Because I see like here Become, and there, it's becoming the bridge for yeah. Iran and, and Europe. Mm. I see that, eh? yeah. yeah. I think so, I think so. Um, yeah, you just talk about the tournament. Mm. Uh, yeah, my agent, Amir Hashemi, he, they, are, they are having one of the probably biggest uh, youth tournament yep. uh, ever happened in, in the Netherlands, uh, beginning of June. And there were a lot of, you know, young, you know, talented players coming, yeah, big clubs coming around, well. big clubs yeah. as well. And um, yeah, I mean, when we talked about, you know, he, he wants to start doing this, mm -hmm. I was really supporting him big time yep. because of, I said, yeah, a lot of young kids, they, they can come, see the environment, see how it looks. Probably there will be a team coming from Iran from as Iran, well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then they come, 
team comes from Mexico, from Canada, from you know Slovakia. So a lot Dortmund, of Benfica, a lot, yeah, also, a lot of yeah. Champions League teams comes as well. So that's you know from early age of 15, 16, you can come see the environment, how yeah. the quality is. And yeah, I mean, for myself, I see myself, you know, I try to be, you know, there present uh, mm -hmm. in that uh, tournament as well. So, yeah, like I said, for me, it's important that, you know, over the years you experience something that a lot of kids dream of. And then if you can help them even 1% to make sure that they, are, they get pushed towards mm -hmm. something which yeah. helps their future and they can become a better player, but also a good person, um, yeah, I try to do my best yeah. for that. You think he could be a good coach? Mm -hmm. Yes, for yeah. sure. He has the personality and mm -hmm. the quality of talking with uh, everyone. Nice. <laughs> I see you in a suit, you know. <laughs> you always look fresh, you look like the, the boss. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been lucky enough to work with very, very good coaches and hopefully in upcoming years with more coaches. And I think to learn a little bit of from every coach, um, combining on and off the pitch, I think it can help us, you know, like to bring that quality and experience you get throughout the, throughout the years for your country. You know, we come from a country where, you know, all the kids, they have big dreams, but they don't really living it or they don't have the opportunity to go and show themselves. So, yeah, if you can be someone who can help them in that way, yeah, yeah. I would love to do that. The life after the career. But you're still fully in your career. You're still, uh, you're still, still active right now. Yeah. <laughs> still active. What the... Uh, what are the what are the next moves? What is what is like? What do you see for your future? Do you yeah. want to still play in the league? Uh, what 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 would you like to? What you dreamed of? Or because you, you've played for three clubs in the Netherlands: NEC, AZ, Feyenoord. You've went to to Brighton. What are your your future ambitions? Yeah, to be honest, I, I always say first thing first. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying my time in Feyenoord. I've had three amazing years in this club. Um, when I, when I came to Feyenoord, to be honest, um, I've never planned to stay three years. Uh, I've never thought that it goes the way it went, you know, winning the league, winning the cup, playing, you know, a lot of good European games. Being one of the fans' favorite players. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've never expected to go to the way it is, but um, to be honest, yeah, now I'm, I'm going to focus on Feyenoord, mm -hmm. upcoming couple of games, and then we'll see what's, what's bringing for future. But yeah, I would like to stay in Europe. Um, mm -hmm. I would definitely would like to stay in Europe uh, as long as it's possible. We have World Cup in two years. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I want to stay in this high level because yep. of I see mentality physically. I'm capable of staying a couple of more years, get more experience and, um, and perform. So that's, that's in my head, to be honest. I cannot say one specific thing that that's what I'm thinking of. But um, when I see the overall situation, um, I would like to stay around. I would yeah. like to stay in, uh, you know, in, uh, you know, one of the good leagues in Europe. Yeah. And yeah, that's a goal to be honest. And that's what I work hard for every single day um, to stay as long as possible here. Like I said, and uh, you know, just enjoy yeah. living in <laughs> Europe. I read that uh, that you would like to do Bundesliga one uh, one day because that's uh, for us Iranians. Our legends all played in Germany. We always watched Bundesliga football. No, that's true, yeah. I mean, uh, Bundesliga has always been one of my favorite leagues mm. uh, growing up. Because like you said, we had players, uh, Ali Dai, Ali Karimi, mm. Mehdi Mahtavikia, mm. Vaid Hashemian. These guys play high level um, for many, many years yeah. um, in, uh, in Bundesliga. So me growing up, these were the guys that we always look up to, you know, in a national team and also... You know, I was cl club -wise. watching Bochum with my father yeah. because Hashemian played there. Yeah, exactly. You know, so Bundesliga is always like a popular topic in Iranian uh, football. Yeah, but I mean, I, I really like Italian league as well because mm. now we have players there, so yeah. it, would be, it would be fun to be around there as mm. well. But yeah, like I said, future is uh, you can never predict the future. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. True. Yeah, true. You've true. played in the Premier League. That might be a destination for you as well. Like, how was that experience? And like, what can you advise, for example, if Santi goes there, like? What can you advise him in that sense from the Premier League about the intensity, the culture of the English people, etc.? To be honest, we have that conversation a lot with Santi. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, because yeah, he's an amazing player. Um, more importantly for me, at least, amazing guy as well. And like he said, we, are, we connected a lot, so we talk about details about the whole situation. Yeah, Premier League, um, amazing league. I mean, I think 
every football player would, would probably say is a dream to play in Premier League. Um, probably the biggest difference that I felt air to, uh, to Premier League is the pace. Pace is, you know, like something very important and you facing a lot more quality players, yeah, with all respect to players in Eredivisie. So because of they come, you know, because of the financial situation there is in Premier League, they are more capable of bringing, you know, a lot of players and coaches uh, into the league. So the pace, quality of the players, obviously, a lot of coaches, you know, and it's the league that the whole world watching. So there's always expectations there as well. And one of the biggest difference that, you know, I try to also tell the guys who always want to make steps is that, you know, in countries like I would say, you know, Netherlands, even in Bundesliga, even they always give times to players to develop, you know, get to use to the environment because going from Europe um, to UK is a big switch yeah. in terms of culture, the whole lifestyle and everything. So, but because of the whole situation in Premier League, they expect you to perform yeah, you know, straight high. away yeah. and you have to live up to the expectations. And then they start judging because of, you know, they want you to be there straight away and they're not thinking, yeah, player comes 22, 23, 24, they need time to develop in a new environment. So these are probably the biggest difference that, you know, there Santi is. Might yeah. face. Santi, La Liga or Premiership? Where would you love to play? Um, I think both are in the same level. Mm. For me, I mean, Spain is same language, I think is a more similar from Latin America. But yeah, Premier League is the best football in the world. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And do you have some, some, some clubs that you would love to Yeah, see but uh, Be of course I have, something. but <laughs> <laughs> I will not like to say them no, because of course, of course you then don't. you close some doors. Yeah. So I will keep you have like them in your mind. You have yeah, them in your yes, mind, yes. Huh? yes. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Amb <laughs> ambition. You have the and and yeah. Ambition or you keep it to yourself or you speak it uh, to the outside world mm. and I think uh, yeah. you don't want to burn bridges. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you don't want to burn bridges. Yeah, maybe you play in both, like Chicharito. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it's a dream for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think it's, it's the dream of every kid. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well. Nice. Ali, I, I told my friends that you are uh, going to be a guest in the show and I uh, said, but would you guys like to know? They say, how is this guy's haircut flawless on the pitch? Every week. <laughs> <laughs> Untouched. Every week. Like you walk, you know, you know where we sit, right? At the, at the, and they're like, hey, how is this guy's hair always like perfect? <laughs> Give us a secret. No, it's funny. Every time that I'm not in the mood to, to do my hair, like people around are very surprised. Like, hey, what's wrong with you today? Bro? <laughs> <laughs> and that's also within, you know, family or friends and the stuff we have mm -hmm. in the club. So every time... It's a sign. Every time when I go to play lounge without doing my hair, everybody like looking a little bit weird and I'm like, okay, did I do something wrong? <laughs> no, but nah, there is no secret to be honest. I just want to make sure that, you know, my hair is in a right... Two hours before the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you use his wax and uh, yeah. product? Everything. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, no, nice. but no, I just try to, yeah, just keep it clean um, to make sure that, you know, um, you know, things are more smoothly because mm. it's not going to affect anything. But mm -hmm. at the end, when you are used to in certain things, because mm. obviously as a football player, you always have some superstitious things before mm. the game, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for me, one of the things is just making sure that I do my hair. So Good hair there is not a secret behind <laughs> it. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, OK, you. you have you have like a fresh haircut. You look fresh. But I see this guy modeling yeah, for man. Volvo, Hugo Boss. You have like you like him. You're a model on the side, man. I'm watching your Instagram. <laughs> He's a model footballer part-time, I think. <laughs> no. no, I have the advantage, I think. I don't know if it's advantage, but we are a lot of Mexicans. Yeah. We are a lot in the country. Mexican and David Beckham. I saw the Adidas shoot was dope, by the way, with the, for the new, uh, for the, for the yeah, jersey. Yeah, no. yeah and uh, of course, um, they like me to, to show the brands in Mexico so the people can, can, can see it. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, I just 
<laughs> let myself Next to be a, a, a model. <laughs> no. do, do, you, do you enjoy modeling? Or no, I don't like no? it, but uh, <laughs> I do it. <laughs> Why the waiting? Eh? You have to yeah. wait a lot. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's work, yeah. yeah. It's work, uh, but it's not football, so I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but when you see the end result, it doesn't make you smile like, ah. Yeah, that's okay. the, the end result is, is really good. And, <laughs> and when I see like, uh, for example, in the airplane, you, you have a, a commercial and I see myself there, it's like, oh, <laughs> I know this guy. I know this. <laughs> and my father, the same family, always send me picture and everything, so the end result is good. Yeah. But, uh, Somebody yeah. next to you in the plane is like, is, is, sorry, is that you? <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 it happens. Yeah, it's nice, nice. <laughs> but yeah. dope to hear that um, you're uh, coming with him to Mexico. You're going to visit uh, Mexico. Like, nice, uh, nice travel uh, destination. And... Um, yeah, man, I'm curious how that, how that trip will be. Who's gonna, what, you b both guys go in the car. Who's gonna, who's, whose music is gonna play? Which playlist is, uh, is on? You know? Depends. If it's with my car, I think mine. And then if we are with Santi, of course, Latino music is on. In the game, it's 50-50. In the game, yeah. it's 50-50, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I had a very nice Latino music the other day, <laughs> yeah? yeah? And yeah. the video? We had a little dancing. small dance as well. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> nice, nice, and nice. I put Persian music. Persian song. Beshkan he knows it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. No, but I put the Persian song and Santi got some move as well. Ah, yeah. nice, nice, Good nice, dance, nice. like shaking. But that's like the battle, like you go on vacation, you both enter the car, somebody's driving, and then it's who's gonna connect the Bluetooth? <laughs> is that gonna be a battle? Or is it, are no, I think because I love Latino music, so. Yeah, uh, reggaeton. Reggaeton, yeah, I love reggaeton, so I think should be, mm -hmm. I should be fine with uh, Santi's music. Who's your favorite reggaeton artist right now? Bad Bunny. Bad, Bad Bunny? Bunny? For sure, yeah. He's the biggest, yeah? I Man. think he's. Here and the other ones are here. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, that's, I see sometimes his numbers on Spotify. It's like billions, billions, billions of places. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Yes. Insane. And who's your favorite Persian artist, if you could choose one? I would say probably Shadmer. Shadmer is amazing. Yeah. And Mohsen Yagana. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's old I mean, school. Yeah, for me, it's difficult to tell the names, but yeah. I'm saying these two because these are a little bit of, like you said, old yeah, school. Yeah. But people at home are going to listen to it. No, but because of a lot of this new generation, the singers are mm -hmm. very good friends of mine, so mm -hmm. if I dig out a name, it's not really nice. Tohi, we <laughs> also listen to Tohi. <laughs> no, but these two are probably my most favorite ones. Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. Yeah, man. Nice to see the friendship yeah. and, the, and the trip to, to Mexico that's, uh, that's, uh, that's coming up. I'm, uh, I'm curious. I'm curious how that, uh, <laughs> how that will be. <laughs> and um, that's also part of football because you're in a short time with each other, you know, like two years, and we don't know what's going to happen the, city, uh, the season after and after, but there will be one time that you, you know, you don't play, you don't guys play uh, with each other and the friendship will be on a distance. What will be the most beautiful memory of you guys at your time at Feyenoord, if you could choose one? I will choose a lot, but of course the first championship, the mm. league, and then going celebrating to Ibiza. Everything mm. was really good for for the group. Oh, so you went with the whole team to Ibiza? Yeah, yeah. Ah. but you don't want to know details. So. No, yeah. that's what everybody <laughs> says. Know, They're like, fine. yeah, there was Ibiza trip. We can't talk a lot about it. I'm like, yeah. okay, you know, <laughs> no, you know, you know, championship. But with, uh, if you could choose another me memory together with uh, with Santi, that will. Would, that you will remember forever? Uh, probably I would say the day we went to um, Cool Single. Mm -hmm. And uh, a video came out from me and Santi, so I was just, I put my arm around his, mm -hmm. uh, his shoulder and uh, like the Cool Single was like full of people. Mm -hmm. And then we were watching outside, I don't know if he remembers, um, from uh, this window of the Gemeente, you know Gemeente, the yeah. city hall. So, it was just a good bump for me to mm. see so many people coming for, you know, championship celebration. And yeah, it was one of the most amazing feelings, to be honest, I had throughout my career and we could share it together. Mm -hmm. And I can name out a lot of more. Mm -hmm. My yeah. first goal was assist from Ali. Yeah, exactly. And the celebration yeah. was... Oh, should yeah. I tell you something? It's meant to be, yeah? Huh? Should <laughs> I tell you something? I oh. always told him, like, you guys should play together because he got amazing cross yeah. and you can have amazing. Remember, I told you, like, yeah. Ali and Santi was ideal, ideal attack for... Uh, we score a lot of our crosses yeah. and yeah. passes yeah. a lot. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, man, beautiful, beautiful. It's like a legendary years at Feyenoord. You know, beautiful friendship out of it. And as a, as a last question, I'm curious, like one day you guys become old, you're like 80 years old, you sit on a 
couch the, your grandchildren are watching videos of you guys playing at Feyenoord. What will you tell your grandchildren about Ali? How was Ali? I would say he's almost the same as me. Mm -hmm. He comes from a country that the football is number one, as in Mexico. Uh, he fight uh, to be in Europe since he was a child. And he grew up, he, he became a big player. And, and I would say that uh, after being a good player, he's a, a real good uh, person and he's always never failing the group. Uh, mm. That's a, a, good, a important thing. Nice, mm. nice, nice, nice words. Ali, how would you yeah. describe Santi? <laughs> Uh, in the meanwhile, I was I was thinking, yeah. To be honest, Santi is um, like I said, is that guy in the team that <clears throat> you can always go to. You can always talk about different subjects, and um, you can have fun with him. Um, yeah, he's he's very open-minded in a lot of different uh, different ways. One of the things I really like about him, he's very well respected when it comes to religion. Uh, he truly believes what's good for him, it happens in the right time and we talk about that a lot of times as well because as a football player you always have ups and downs and um, yeah, on the pitch, yeah, I don't need to talk about him, <laughs> um, how good he is but for me personally because at the end of the day we, we, we are gifted from God a talent where yep. obviously there, there is out there a lot of guys who can have it but I think in a football world the guys who have personality and good character, they can go the furthest. And uh, that's something he definitely has. And uh, yeah, to be honest, um, I try to you know enjoy our moments every day uh, because we were on the way talking about this, that we are really like a family, you know, mm -hmm. like we spend almost a half of day day together. Yeah. If that environment, the energy is not good enough, mm -hmm. you're not looking forward to go yeah. to the training. Yeah. So yeah, that's also something that Santi definitely has in his, uh, in his character. Okay. It's a beautiful note to, to end uh, yeah. this yeah, conversation. Beautiful Thank guys. you very much. Guys. Thank you guys for yeah. coming. Yeah, Thank you oh, for really years. appreciate having us, guys. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yes. <laughs> appreciate it. Ali, appreciate it. Gracias. Gracias. Thank you.